Welcome to Hannity. We begin with what is really a chilling Fox News alert. In moments, by the way, the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump, he will join us live on camera to respond to the gut-wrenching disaster that is now unfolding inside Afghanistan as 10,000-plus American citizens are trapped inside the country, and we see no immediate plan to get them out as Joe Biden has been asleep at the wheel for days. We expect, oh, he might momentarily arrive back from his vacation at the White House. We'll ask President Trump about his prior negotiations, direct negotiations with the Taliban, and the red lines that he put in place. Uh, that Joe Biden clearly did not enforce. President Trump coming up exclusively. Meanwhile, tonight, Joe Biden finally coming back from Camp David and gearing up for what is, I guess, a restful night at the White House. While thousands of our fellow Americans are living through hell on earth in Afghanistan, we cannot even report to you tonight the exact number of Americans that are trapped inside Afghanistan. Somewhere, we're told, reports between 10,000 and maybe as many as 40,000 of our fellow Americans are trapped behind enemy lines spread out all over the country. We don't know where they all are. The Biden administration doesn't know exactly how many. They don't know where these Americans are located. And now Biden's State Department is just telling them, just shelter in place. And when notified, find your own way to the airport in Kabul. Please tell me that's not your plan. You, you guys are not serious. According to Biden's clueless national security advisor, the terrorists in the Taliban will now that they're in control provide safe passage. This as Taliban fighters are now savagely beating, shooting, stabbing people all around the airport. A foreign correspondent with the L.A. Times tweeted out these horrific images showing the Taliban using gunfire, whips, sticks, sharp objects to attack those on airport road. According to one U.S. official, quote, the Taliban have a ring outside of the airport. They won't let anyone inside it. And the big issue here is that no people outside of the Taliban ring will get in. No way they get 30,000, not even close. Over the weekend, we saw these images of a U.S. military plane packed with 600-plus people desperately fleeing Kabul. But now planes are taking off mostly empty. Why? Because the Taliban is not allowing passage into the airport. One German plane capable of carrying 150 individuals, yeah, they took off with seven passengers on board. And meanwhile, Taliban terrorists, they're going now door to door, according to numerous reports tonight, searching for Americans, allies, and American interpreters, and anyone else who they believe assisted the U.S. in any way over the last 20 years. There are horrifying reports of people being tortured, dismembered, and executed in the streets across the country. According to the Washington Post, wow, when would they ever agree with Sean Hannity? U.S. citizens are now reaching out to anyone and everyone back in Washington for help. The Biden administration must get moving on a plan to rescue them before it's too late. Tonight, we all, as a country, we need to pray to God that it's not too late. With every passing hour and every passing day, we grow closer and closer to what could be a possibly a mass hostage situation or worse, the murder of Americans on a colossal scale. The number one priority of the Biden administration, when Joe finally gets back, he hasn't quite arrived yet, must be the safe evacu evacuation of every American. But as we speak, at this hour, there's no plan to rescue our fellow citizens let alone our allies, let alone the translators that were promised by our government that if this moment ever came, they would be protected by us and other Afghans that face certain death because of their assistance to our country in the last 20 years. There is no plan whatsoever. There's nothing. And even worse, the Biden administration won't even commit to securing the airport past August the 31st, even if Fellow Americans are trapped inside the country. This, I had to see for myself. I will let you decide. Can you offer any guarantee to the Americans and Afghan allies that if they remain there past the end of the month, 
U.S. troops will help them evacuate well, past think, the end of the month. Weijia, our, our focus right now is uh, undoing the work at hand and on the task at hand, and that is day by day getting as many American citizens, as many SIV applicants, as many members of a vulnerable population who are eligible to be evacuated to the airport and out on planes. Uh, and we're going to do that in an expeditious fashion. That is the focus of the president, of our secretary of defense, of our secretary of, of state, uh, and everybody on our national security team. Uh, so that, that is where we will keep our efforts. Joe Biden and Jen Psaki, they had ignored this for three straight days as they've both been on vacation. Our defense secretary, our secretary of state, the vice president, and all of the national security advisors seemed totally clueless and oblivious to what was unfolding before the world's eyes to see. To be clear, the Biden administration is making zero promises tonight. If you're afraid for your life and you are in Afghanistan and somehow seeing this show, whether you're an American or one of our allies, you have good reason to feel that way. If you're a journalist whose life is at risk tonight, like every other American, Joe Biden has no plan for you either. And none of this is, is political any, any way. I don't care what news organization, I don't care why you're there, who you work for, you're a fellow American. Every good, decent American, we want you all home safely. But for whatever reason, Joe Biden just didn't seem to care, didn't seem to understand the magnitude as this was unfolding in record time when he told us this wouldn't happen. If you're a little girl tonight and you live in Afghanistan, well, the odds are higher that you will be enslaved by the Taliban. Joe Biden takes zero responsibility, as we saw yesterday. He's either heartless or completely checked out. You decide. Until a few hours ago, Joe Biden hadn't even spoken to not a single world leader about the fall of Kabul and the situation unfolding in Afghanistan. Not a single other world leader. Keep in mind, Biden was warned over and over and over again. Marco Rubio told us last night that his strategy for withdrawal would end in this disaster. Marco Rubio and others, Democrat and Republican senators on the Intel Committee, have been warning Biden and his administration repeatedly. They have been ignored repeatedly. Joe Biden's top generals, according to numerous reports, were pleading with him to slow the drawdown to conditions that were based on the ground when they were conducive, because they're not conducive right now for what's happening. Now, this is the single largest military intel debacle I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a number of them. And as this crisis is unfolding, Biden could only be bothered to put his vacation on pause for a short, what, 10-minute scripted speech where he blamed everybody for this disaster and then said the buck stopped with him, then turned around and went right back on vacation. Or as the Wall Street Journal editorial board, well, quite eloquently put it, Biden to Afghanistan and the Americans there dropped dead. Biden is literally defiant in blaming others for his Afghan debacle. Even one former CIA analyst, I couldn't believe my eyes, on MSDNC was outraged, and rightly so. Take a look. This consequential speech by the American president didn't run from it. He owned it. He owned his decision. He owned the fact that, as he put it, the buck stops with him. I hope he gets to own their deaths, too. I, I don't, I feel like I watched a different speech than the rest of you guys. I was appalled. And the idea that the Afghan military should be blamed for this, do you know how many casualties the Afghan military took in an average year? More than the United States did in 20. When you're not getting paid on a regular basis, when you're not getting fuel, when no one is supplying you with ammunition, and yet you're still showing up to the fight, how dare us for having to blame these people for not having the audacity to be able to survive a Taliban onslaught? We promised them that in their time of need, we would take care of them. How do you ever expect anyone to ever trust us again if we don't do that now while we can. Joe Biden has destroyed America's credibility around the world, and tonight, actually, that's the least of our worries. China and Russia, they're already looking to cut deals with the new Islamic Emirates, as it will be called, of Afghanistan, run by the terrorists supporting Taliban. Terrorists from al-Qaeda will now have, again, a safe haven in Afghanistan, once again, just two decades after 9-11-2001. And get this, the reported mastermind behind the Taliban takeover, this ought to get your blood boiling. Yeah, we had him in custody. He was a prisoner at Guantanamo Bay. 
We had him. We had no reason to release him. But he was released in a swap, you might remember, for Army deserter Bo Bergdahl during the Obama-Biden administration. And if you recall at the time, they both assured all of us in America that they were going to Qatar and would never return to Afghanistan or terrorism ever again. But don't worry, according to the Biden administration, well, Americans can trust this terrorist to now give them safe passage to the airport that they now have created a perimeter around and not allowing anyone to get through, the one that's currently surrounded, the one that embassy workers were airlifted into. Joe Biden, this country, just days ago, none of this would happen. How could he be so wrong? That's a question we'll be asking for a long time. Take a look. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well equipped, as well equipped as any army in the world, and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. Now, this is a disaster on a massive scale. There's no end in sight. President Trump, as I told you, is moments away. We'll get his take. How will we deal with this from now? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.